The screencast covers the material from Module 4, Lesson 3. It's based upon the practice set. And in this lesson, we move uh, from modeling. We still can do some modeling, but we'll do less of it. We'll work on the algorithms. And we're going to relate fractions and division. On the first page, we have a, a number of things to do here. And it is laid out for us in the example. You should have one similar in your homework. We have a division expression here. We're going to rewrite that in unit form, including the answer. We're going to write that as an improper fraction, a mixed number. Then we're going to relate it to a division problem. And then we're going to check. Okay, so let's do the first example. So 3 divided by 2. Well, three holes is six halves, so I'm going to write six. Six halves divided by two is three halves. The answer to that is an improper fraction. Well, my, my dividend becomes my numerator, three. My divisor is my denominator. Now I can switch this into an improper fraction. Let's review how we might do that. We can decompose 3 halves into 2 halves plus 1 half. And the 2 halves is equal to 1. And we add the 1 half, we get 1 and 1 half, resulting in our answer here. Now we're going to write a division problem. Again, our first number here in... Uh, the 3 divided by 2, we have to put that 3 in the tableau, and 2 is the divisor outside. 3, or rather 2 goes into 3 once. We'll multiply 1 times 2, we get 2. I have a remainder of 1. We're going to express this remainder as a fraction. That's 1 out of 2, so the answer is 1 and 1 half. Now we need to check our answer. We check our answers in division by multiplying our divisor times our quotient. So we have 2 times 1 and 1 half. And that is the same as 1 and 1 half. We're relating our multiplication to repeated subtraction. So 2 times 1 and a half is 1 and a half plus 1 and a half. I'm now going to add the whole. So I have 1 plus 1, and that equals 2. And 1 half plus 1 half is 2 halves. 2 halves becomes another 1. So 2 plus 1 equals 3. We'll do one more example for you. And this may seem tedious, but we really are establishing a relationship between fractions, divisions, and uh, many of our uh, operations and manipulations of these. So now I'm going to look at C, and my expression here is missing. Well, I'm going to go right over to here, because I know that the number in the tableau is my dividend, and that goes first, so I have 6. The number outside my tableau is my divisor. Looking at the next, the unit forms, if I take my 6 and break it into fourths. Each six, each one is four, so I have six ones, so that's 24 fourths, divided by four, and that gives me six fourths. We're now going to write it as an improper fraction. Again, my dividend is my numerator. My divisor is my denominator. We will express that as an improper fraction, and we, or mixed number rather, and again, I can show you the decomposition. I have 6 fourths equals 4 fourths plus 2 fourths. And that equals 1 and 2 fourths. We could simplify that, but I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Now we do the division. 4 goes into 6 once. 1 times 4 is 4. I subtract, I get 2. That's 2 left out of 4. So instead of using a remainder, we write it as 1 and 2 fourths. Now we'll do the check. A little tight on room here. So I have 4, because that's my divisor, times 1 
and two fourths. And that is the same as one and two fourths added four times. plus one and two fourths. Kind of sloppy there. Alright, so now I'm going to add all my holes. I have, I hope you can read that, one, one, two, three, four holes. So I'm going to combine them. I get four plus, okay, I have two fourths. How many times? One, Two, three, four. Two fourths four times. That equals eight fourths. Eight fourths is the same as two. So I have four plus two equals six. And that gets me to my original dividend. There's, uh, I believe, three for you to do in your homework. I hope that these examples give you enough to work your way through these. Again, it may seem a little tedious, but we are making uh, relationships clear here. Now we have some word problems. And uh, we can express find this answer in any number of ways. We'll get into that. They explain using how you know using uh, w pictures, words, or numbers. So we can draw diagrams if we like, or we can use the algorithms. So a principal evenly distributed six reams of copy paper to eight fifth grade teachers. How many reams of paper does each fifth grade teacher receive? Well, what's being divided, what's being split? It's the six. So in this case, we have six is being split among eight people. So six divided by eight. Uh, I could draw a diagram. I really don't have a lot of space for that right now. But if we drew that diagram, we would draw six rectangles. And we'd be splitting them eight ways. So we'd have to use some brackets. We'd have to break each one of those holes up into eight parts would be one way to do it. But I'm going to use the algorithm. So I have 6 divided by 8, and we know that that is the same as 6 eighths. We can uh, further simplify that if we like to 3 fourths. Or we can set up a division problem. 6 divided by 8, how many times is 8 going to 6? It's 0 times. Uh, 0 times 8 is 0. I get a 6, that's my remainder. So 0 and 6 eighths, which we know is the same as 3 fourths. So that's how we do it numerically. Uh, again, I don't really have the space to draw the picture here very easily, but if you wanted to, you could. Again, it tells you pictures, words, or numbers. I'm going to use numbers. And finally, we should write a statement in words. Uh, each teacher... receives three-fourths or six-eighths of a ream. Okay, now this is an interesting one. You're going to have something similar to this in your homework, too. If there are twice as many reams of paper and half as many teachers, how would the amount of each, how would the amount each teacher receives change? Well, let's go back to the original problem. We had six reams originally. So if I had twice as many reams, I would have six times two is twelve. So that's my reams. And half as many teachers. Well, I had eight teachers. Half as many is divided by two. I would have four teachers. So let's take a look at what we have here. I have 12 divided by 4, which equals 12 fourths, which equals 3. 
So how does that change? Well, each teacher has quite a bit more, don't they? So if we want to compare 12 fourths, looking at this form right here, with 3 fourths, what, what happens here? Well, each teacher gets 3 times as much, or 4 times as much, excuse me. So what happens? Each teacher gets 4 times as much when they have twice as much teacher uh, paper and half as many teachers. So simply solve the problem, compare it to the previous answer. Look at the relationships between the answers. In fraction form, it becomes very clear. So it's easy to figure out the relationship between 3 fourths and 12 fourths. A caterer has prepared 16 trays of hot food for an event. The trays are placed in warming boxes for delivery. Each box can hold five trays of food. How many warming boxes are necessary for the delivery if the caterer wants to use as few boxes as possible? Explain how you know. Well, I'm going to explain with numbers, and I'm going to use some words. I'm not going to write them down. I like to keep these uh, screencasts uh, on the briefer side. So we will... Uh, look at the problem. We have 16 trays. And we got to find out how many boxes. I'm going to draw a little diagram here. So I have 16, and I don't know how many boxes, so I'm just going to write a 1 and a question mark there. And I know that each one of those holds 5. So now let's go, and we have 16 divided by 5. We could say it's 16 fifths. We could change that to an improper fraction, or excuse me, a mixed number, and we get 3 and 1 fifth. We could also demonstrate that using dividing. 16 divided by 5 is 3. We get a 15. And that's 15 and 1 fifth. Now, what does that mean? We need to use 3? No. If we use 3, we will have 15 in the boxes, right? So uh, this would be one box. That would be 5. Another box would be 5. Another box would be another 5 for a total of 15. We still have one more box or one more tray. So we're going to need one more box. Uh, again, I'm using words to explain this. If he, if he has three boxes, one tray is not going to fit. So he's going to need a fourth box. He'll need four boxes. Now, let's look at B. If the caterer fills a box completely before filling the next box, what fraction of the last box will be empty? Well, again... We have our 5 in one box, 5 in another box, 5 in the other box. They're filled. Now the last box gets 1. How many more spaces are there? There are 4 spaces. So 4 out of 5 are empty. So in a way, I can take my 1 minus my 1 fifth because I'm filling that spot. And that becomes 4 fifths. Again, 4 fifths represents the four empty spots in a box that can hold five. So we're putting in one, that fills one-fifth, four-fifths are left over.